Hi, I'm Jason, and this is the Pattern to Print channel. And today what I'm going to be doing is starting a series of, I guess, what I'm calling their primer videos. These are sort of things uh, that illustrate sort of some of the basic workflow that I do with a lot of my projects. So when I go on to these other projects later on, I have sort of a set of videos that kind of explains the basics so I don't have to keep on repeating them over and over again. So the first one in this series is going to be on scanning. Now, it's not going to be... 3D scanning, which is really cool, like the structure sensor can do. It's going to be flatbed scanning from a flatbed scanner, like this. Now, um, I might ask, well, why, why do you need, why would you use a, a flatbed scanner? And I think that a lot of people are kind of intimidated by um, CAD designing. It is a skill, and it's really cool, but it does take a while to learn. And then some, some people are just a lot more comfortable with just having kind of a pen and a paper and drawing things out. And what a scanner does is allows you to do design work and fairly sophisticated design work without needing to know any CAD uh, by using the scanning process. Uh, it also opens up a lot of material. Like for me personally, I'm not a very good natural artist, but there's a ton of material that you can use, like... Uh, like, I, I've, I've used this book. It's a Chinese paper cutting uh, book where it's all sorts of patterns, and you can turn these easily with a scanner into 3D prints. Um, also, if you notice, I've got my clock over here, and that also came from, you know, a woodworking pattern. So that was already developed. I didn't have to, to come up with this, so I purchased the pattern, I scanned it in, and then you can do some really cool prints. Now, you might ask, well, those are all kind of two-dimensional. I mean, that's not really interesting. What about kind of like 3D, you know, organic kind of stuff and you can actually still do stuff like this like this is a, a Christmas ornament that I put up on Thingiverse in 2012 and I was fortunate enough for it to uh, be a featured item and if you were to do this in a CAD program I mean it could be done but it would take take a fair amount of skill but all it is is just a, a hand drawing the from a pattern that I, I got so you can do organic sophisticated modeling uh, even with just a, a flat bend scanner. So um, now you might also say, well, I mean, what is this, 2005? I mean, why, why a flat bed scanner? I mean, we all have phones. I mean, if you're cashing your check, you don't pull out your flat bed scanner, you just use your phone. Now, phones are great and they do work pretty well for a lot of types of scanning. But for this, you know, it, it doesn't work as well. Now for some, maybe, artistic kind of stuff, it'll work okay, but it's not going to work well for anything that requires dimensional accuracy. And the reason is, is that the, the phone lens doesn't move. So whenever you take a picture, scan something like this, whatever the lens is pointing at is going to be relatively larger to anything that's on the edges. So like I said, with a clock pattern, that simply wouldn't work. You end up having uh, these introduced distortions. So if when you have a flatbed scanner, the, the flatbed part, you know, moves along the whole surface of the, of the paper. So you don't have any introduced distortion from the scanning process like you would if you took a photo from your camera. So that's why um, it's kind of important to, to do some sort of flat, flatbed scanning because that's going to eliminate that kind of distortion. Now, you might say, okay, well, you know, my parents have one of these scanners sitting next to the fax machine, but, you know, I don't have one. Um, but fortunately, today, it's pretty easy to access scanning equipment. Um, if you work in an office and if you have a copy machine, I, I bet you 90% chance that that thing will do scanning. Um, they just, uh, in the, you know, trying to get the paperless offices, the whole idea is instead of copying things, you just scan it and have an electronic file. So if you have access to a copy machine at work, it probably does uh, the scanning that we need to do here. And the advantage of those kind of copiers is that, a, you know, a home flatbed scanner is only going to do a, sheet, a normal uh, size sheet of paper. If you have, uh, you know, access to a copy machine at work, it's going to do a much bigger uh, legal size uh, paper. Um, if you don't work in an office that has a copy machine, you can go to the any like FedEx, uh, formerly known as Kinko's uh, places, or you know, any of those kind of um, business uh, places where you can go and get you know copies, uh, prints, and things like that. Because they'll have um, copy machines that are gonna do the same thing. So there definitely is a um, being accessible to that. 
so for this um, for this demonstration, what I'm going to do is I I've been working on my wife and I have been working on sort of a logo for the channel, and we're still still working on it. But this is sort of kind of a preview of what we're um, we're thinking of. And so I hand drew this, and I'm I'm not like I said I'm not very good at drawing, and I actually did intentionally um, put some errors in it so I can kind of correct it as we go through the steps. So uh, we're going to go to the computer and we're going to scan this and then go through the process of what I do when I scan stuff into a computer. Okay, so I brought up my scanning software and I still have sort of the settings that I had for the, the previous scanner. So even though uh, you may not have it, this particular brand of scanner, the steps that I go through are going to be similar and the decisions made are going to be similar. So it should should be able to help you out. Now, if you're using like an office copier, you're probably gonna have a few fewer options or you're gonna have a few more iterations because you're probably not gonna have a, a preview mode. But again, it should be enough information to kind of get you through. So the first thing we wanna do is do a preview of the uh, item that I put on the, the flatbed. And usually the preview runs uh, pretty quickly. And uh, it'll be up here in just a moment. And so I only want to scan uh, just the just the logo itself. So I'm going to make the um, the area a lot smaller here, just so we just get what what we want. That's pretty quick. All right. So now that I have that done, um, some of the settings uh, right now it's on photo. Um, this is actually kind of more of a document than a photo. Um, we don't want to do it in color. Not only do we not want to do it in color, we don't want to do it in grayscale either. We want to do this in black and white. The issue with grayscale is that it's going to pick up the paper as a very light color and that's going to really mess things up later on when we're uh, trying to create what we want to extrude. Um, for the resolution, usually 300 is probably good enough, but I tend to go a little overkill, so I'll leave it at, at 600. And the other key here is um, kind of the threshold. And this is sort of going to be a, a trial and error kind of a thing. Because what we want is we want to make sure that it's dark enough so it picks up the lines, but not so dark that it starts adding things uh, where there shouldn't be stuff added. So let's say here if we take it and we really crank up the threshold, we see that it gives us a whole bunch of extra pickles, pixels that we don't. And if we kind of weigh put it down near the zero, then everything kind of disappears. So we want kind of something in the middle. And with this particular document, it's probably, we don't, um, there's probably a fairly large safe range that we could use. Um, so you don't have to be uh, perfectly exact. So now that we have the, um, the uh, contrast that we want and we have the area selected that we want to scan, uh, we can push the scan button. And this is another um, important thing. So for us, scanning a picture, so a JPEG was fine. But usually when we're using uh, this stuff for um, for the 3D scanning, uh, I mean for the 3D modeling, we want to use it as a TIFF. And the reason why we want to do that is a TIFF is uh, not compressed. A JPEG, even if you have it at the highest level of... Um, quality is still going to do some sort of compression. So you're going to get compression artifacts and that's just not what you want at all. So um, do as a TIFF and that will uh, scan it in a way that we um, can easily uh, use it in the following steps and we'll have uh, less cleanup. So here we hit OK and it should go and uh, scan. Now at the 600 um, dots per inch that's going to go fairly slow, though, because we chose black and white, that makes black and white scans a whole lot faster than even grayscale does, and then certainly more, much quicker than um, uh, 600 DPI um, for a color. So here it, it automatically kind of brings up the folder that we um, uh, that it saves it in. So if I double click and look at it, so what you want to look at here is one. Um, is the the lines thick and bold, which they are, so they're, they're not any lateral holes. And two, are there any kind of stray pixels that would have to be cleaned up? And I don't see any here. So we got this one pretty well. We don't have any um, 
um, this is going to be the minimum amount of cleanup. And that's really what you want when you're at this stage, you're scanning, you want to create a file that is going to be the least amount of cleanup as you as you possibly can. So we're, we're good here, and uh, then we can uh, go on to the next step. So now that we have the image saved, we can is now ready to go on to the next steps. So the next step is to uh, do some cleaning up in GIMP. So the next uh, three videos are going to be a video on GIMP, and a video on Inkscape, and then uh, the final step in creating the STL is in OpenSCAD. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, please subscribe if you want to know when the next video is going to be available. Um, and if you have any questions about any part of this process, please feel free to leave a comment below. And uh, that'll be it for this episode. So uh, thank you for stopping by and have fun printing.